Welcome to part two in our five-part series on how to enrich HubSpot with Clay, with a special emphasis on enabling outbound activities. But of course, I think you'll find that the things that you can learn in these videos can be applied to inbound. I wanna start with refreshing your memory about what we did in the last video. And if you haven't seen it yet, I would encourage you to go back and watch it. In the first video, we established our methodology for how we're using lists in HubSpot and then list sources in Clay to identify gaps in our CRM. The specific data that we found last time was LinkedIn profiles. And then we identified ones that were missing, found them, populated them, and moving forward, we're gonna use those LinkedIn profiles for the rest of the videos in this series. So if you haven't done it yet, I really encourage you to watch that video or make sure that you have a LinkedIn profile property in HubSpot and that data in HubSpot so that you can use the rest of these throughout the rest of the series. We've got our lists here on the left in HubSpot, and I'm just gonna jump into how we built them. Here you can see we've got either first name or last name is unknown, and in both cases, we've got LinkedIn profile is known. And the next one, we've got job title is unknown, but LinkedIn profile is known. Now, the way that I'm doing this, there's gonna be potentially some overlap because there's gonna be examples of records where they have no name and no LinkedIn job title. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with paying a little bit extra here in order to have more control and granular control over how we're doing the enrichments for each of these properties. So that's a deliberate choice. You can also see that uh, some of these are never going to enrich. For example, test at example.com, that will never have a contact name because it's not a real account. There's no real person there. It's never gonna resolve. I think a potential enhancement you could do to this would be to add a property in HubSpot to indicate that something is omitted from enrichment or it's, it's not to be enriched. And if you wanna use the size of these contact lists to indicate the health of your data where you, know, you want them to be zero, uh, then I think that would be something that you might want to consider implementing. Let's jump into the clay tables because there I'm going to show you a few things that I didn't show in the first video, but with greater detail, I think that will be useful moving forward, including a GPT prompt and how we use the IDs from HubSpot to make sure that we're updating the right records. So looking at clay, we've got our table. Once again, HubSpot is the source for this list. And in this case, we're stitching across three different providers. Now, one of them is Clay's own data. One of them is Apollo, where we've got an API key. And then a third is a new vendor uh, called Lead Magic. And we're testing Lead Magic's API here. Now, there are interesting situations where you're going to want to try different vendors, different providers, because you can find unique data points from them. And they may not be supported in Clay. In a later video, I'm going to talk about how Lead Magic actually has a new API endpoint. And we're going to introduce that new Lead Magic API endpoint into a waterfall. I'm not going to talk about that right now. I just want to show that the, the benefit here is configurability and how you can change over time the way that you're doing this enrichment. You can reward more accurate or less expensive vendors or both. And you have control basically over what you're paying for and when and why. There may be special requirements you have for your industry. And that's where this approach can be really helpful. Beyond knowing what's going into your system, you can have a lot of control over how it works. Now on the left side, we've got that HubSpot source. We've got that ID. That ID is critical to make sure that we're updating the right contact in HubSpot once we get to the end of our table here on, on the right side of the clay table. I've got a merge column that's pulling across multiple different providers. And if, it, if the first one finds it, we're gonna use that first name. If the second one finds it, we're gonna use that one, third one down the line. And then we're gonna take those name properties and push them over to HubSpot. This is what that merge looks like. This is what it looks like where it's pulling across multiple different providers and then combining it into a single cell. Here you can see the last names in this column. And lastly, here, what I've shown you is what the actual HubSpot enrichment looks like. Now, this is just an example, but here I really strongly recommend using that HubSpot contact ID instead of the contact email address. This will ensure that you're getting the right contact updated. And in this case, we're gonna be updating their first and last name. Now, the use case here beyond just having nice clean data is if you're gonna be incorporating omni-channel outreach, cold calling and things like that, it can be very useful to have the contact name of the person you're calling. And you know, depending on where you're sourcing leads from, you may not have it in the first place. This is gonna be, I think, a really valuable sales enablement piece of data that um, teams, especially doing phones, are gonna want. But you can also use it for variable personalization. You may be getting inbound leads through email signups, lead magnets on your website where you're not getting this type of data. 
So there's other situations where it's useful. I think from a revenue perspective, cold calling is probably the most valuable um, situation where you want to make sure you have con at least contact first names. Okay, now let's talk about job title. The use case here I think is interesting because it's really going to be valuable for future prospecting efforts, as well as inbound and understanding your funnel and things like that. But again, with our outbound focus, you can take this list of job titles and you can give it to your outbound agency. You can give it to your own biz dev team or growth team, and you can have them have a much better understanding of who they're reaching out to. This is where going back to that HubSpot step where we built those filters in the first place really matters because you can set filter requirements for the life cycle stage or associated deals or associated with closed one deals or associated with deals of a lifetime value of over $10,000 or something like that. And you can look at segmentation and get a sense of who these contacts are in your system based on their job title. But if you do not have that job title data, you can't do that type of segmentation reporting and you lose a feedback loop to inform your outbound campaigns. Most campaigns that fail, fail from the start because the list is the strategy. Often repeated, I think it's absolutely true. It's all repeated here too. The list is the strategy and you can use job titles to build better lists. But how do we do it? Once again, we're stitching across multiple providers. We're using Lead Magic. we're using Apollo, we're using Clay's data. In both cases, I found that these providers were a pretty good fit for what we were trying to do here. We're still getting unstructured data back. We're getting some goopy situations here where we've got, for example, things in parentheses and extra names and more descriptive names and things like that. So we're going to be using a clay prompt and I'm going to just slowly scroll through this so you can see the whole thing. You can pause the video and check it out. We've got a generate text enrichment in clay. We've got a couple of examples that we provided. We are requiring that a raw title be present in order to run this column, which is going to help save credits because you don't want to run it unless you've got something to feed into it. And then this is what we're reading into ChatGPT. First, we've got our system prompt, which is providing context for the task, overall explaining what the GPT's responsibility is. And then in the second one, we've got the specific task, where we're explaining what to do, reminding it what to do in cases where it's not sure, and giving some context about how extraneous information may be included. And finally, we're providing it with the raw job title that we got from the providers earlier. What you can see here in this column where it says title ready, that's the output. And we're requiring before updating HubSpot that the title is not unknown. So this is a really useful way to make sure that you run this enrichment, clean up your data, but not introduce new data problems. I hope you found this helpful. Try to drill down into a little more detail here, talk about some potential use cases. In the next video, we're gonna talk about phone numbers, how to get phone numbers, how to stitch across multiple providers, and how to account for the fact that some providers are much more accurate than others. And what do you do when you only have maybe one good one, but a second number that might be good and you want to give your team options to stay on the phone and try to get in touch with this contact. This is something I've built out myself for our own prospecting and even inbound engagement efforts that I've found to be extremely useful. That's going to be in the next video. We're then going to talk about updating our waterfall once we discover new providers. And then finally, we're going to end with tracking job changes from your CRM using Clay.